everyone! In this video, we are going to be talking about how to catch a horse that is nervous or maybe difficult to catch. Um, and we're going to approach this in a little different way than maybe you're used to. And what we're going to do is actually a little counterintuitive. You're going to catch your horse by not trying to catch them. Um, so oftentimes what happens when we're trying to catch our horse is we become very focused on our horse and um, we've got a very specific agenda and something that we want to accomplish with them. So that puts a lot of focus and intention and energy towards our horse just from our mindset. Um, a lot of times we're going in with kind of a, we're gonna get this done attitude. Um, and again, that's gonna put a lot of pressure onto our horse that the horse is going to pick up on. Um, I heard someone say recently, and I can't remember who it was, um, but they said that a human with an agenda is a predator um, with a purpose. And a predator with a purpose is usually a predator that's on the hunt. Um, so remember that we as humans are predators, even though, um, you know, we don't maybe go out and hunt our food anymore. Um, we're still predators and our horse can tell that we're predators. Um, and when we have a very intense or specific focus, um, on our horse, such as when we're going to catch them, that can make it seem like we're a predator on the hunt coming towards them with our focus on our horse. And for some horses, that can make them more nervous. So what we want to do as we're trying to catch our nervous horse is completely take away that pressure and that intention and that focus on the horse. So what we're going to do is instead of trying to catch the horse, we're just going to be around the horse. We're not going to have any focus on the horse or any intention on catching the horse, but we're just going to simply be around them and we're going to try and spark the horse's curiosity in us and trying to encourage the horse to just be comfortable around us and maybe even come up to us on his own because he's curious about what we're doing. Um, so we're just approaching it from a little bit of a different mindset. Um, this can seem like a little slower and even more boring process, so this video is not going to be very exciting. Um, might even be a little boring for you to watch. Um, and the process can be a little boring too. So when you're doing this with your horse, you want to kind of try and make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. So don't do it in a time where you're going to get easily frustrated um, or annoyed if you can't catch your horse right away. Um, try not to do it in a time where you have to catch the horse um, because that feeling of having to catch the horse is going to put even more pressure on both you and the horse and the horse is going to pick up on that. Um, so do it in a time where you've got lots of time you're in a good mental space um, where you're not going to get frustrated um, and you don't have to catch the horse. Um, you probably will end up catching the horse, but you don't want to have that as your primary function or uh, primary um, focus um, because, again, that's going to put that pressure and intensity onto the horse. Um, so in this video, we're going to take a look at Evie. She's a little uh, pony that we just recently purchased. Um, and Evie's had some handling. She's even been ridden a little bit, um, but pretty limited. So she's very shy, um, nervous um, around people a little bit. And when she came to us, we were actually told that um, she was hard to catch. So we knew this going into it. Um, and with her, I think, you know, it's just that she needs her confidence built up. Um, so this approach works really well for her. And it actually works really well for a lot of horses because oftentimes the reason that horses don't want to be caught is because they don't feel comfortable being caught. Um, so this approach works really well for that. Um, 
You'll see that uh, in this video I'm working with Evie in a fairly small pen and she's by herself. Um, the only reason for that really is because um, at this point she had just come to our farm and we always keep new horses separate for about 10 days before introducing them into the herds. Um, so that's the, really the only reason that she's in the small pen all by herself. Um, the, these, uh, this idea can work just as well out in a larger pen and with other horses. Um, it might take a little bit longer because there's more distractions and you might have to walk around a little bit more if you're in a larger space. Um, but it can definitely work just as well in those situations. So, I think, I'm looking at my notes here, I think that's all I needed to tell you. So let's get right into the video here. <clears throat> Alright, so catching a nervous horse. So there's Evie. In this first part of the video here, I'm just going to show you kind of how she normally reacts when you come up. You can see she's very tense there. She's kind of allowing me to touch her, but definitely not happy about it. I can kind of pin her in the corner there. I can get the rope around her and then get the halter on her, but she's definitely not happy about it. And if we were in a larger space um, where I wasn't able to kind of corner her there, it would definitely be a lot harder to catch her. So um, I want my horses to look forward to being caught and to enjoy being around me um, and to be comfortable with it. So I don't want to just kind of force myself upon her. I want her to actually um, be comfortable and um, be happy with that. So. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to catch our horse by not trying to catch them. So I'm going to just kind of walk around in her pasture and I am just completely ignoring the horse. I'm just doing random stuff, moving the hay a little bit. My focus is not on Evie. I'm of course aware of what she's doing um, and aware of where she is, watching her out of my peripheral vision and just being aware of what she's doing. But otherwise, I'm just doing random things, checking the water, walking around, just going to kind of hang out a little bit. You can see that she's watching me, and at this point, she hasn't felt like she's needed to move away from me, which is what we're looking for. If your horse feels like they need to move away from you, then you're putting too much pressure on them. So I'm just kind of walking around. Hanging out, going to check the gate latch there, just doing, doing random things um, to try and kind of get her thinking and get her interested in what I'm doing. Then I'm going to offer her a greeting. She's going to turn me down. That's okay. So there she felt like she needed to move away, so that was a little bit too much pressure for her at that time. That's all right. I'm not going to follow her. I'm not going to chase her. I'm giving her that choice to move away if she feels like she needs to. So I really want Evie to know that she's got a choice and she's got a say in what we do. And I'm going to listen to her. And if she tells me that she's not comfortable with something, then I'm going to honor that. And this is super important, especially for this horse, because I'm just starting to establish a relationship with her. Um, this is actually one of the first times that I really interacted with her. So I want to start that relationship off on a good note um, with her feeling like it's something that she actually wants to be a part of and that she has a choice in um, what we're going to do. And I also want her to trust me and know that I'm going to honor her limits and her comfort level. So I'm just going to go do some other stuff there to try and spark her curiosity a little bit. Just moving the hang around. Doesn't really matter what you do. Just trying to kind of get her interest in me a little bit. Like, hey, what's that person doing? There, she's going to offer to come up to me a little bit. Ooh, 
even offer her a greeting. Still pretty hesitant there. So here, this is a little bit <clears throat> later on the same day, but a different session. See, she's curious. I'm off screen right now, so you can't see me, but she's watching me. And she is curious. So again, I'm not gonna directly approach her. I'm just gonna walk around in her pasture, doing some different things again, checking the hay, checking the water. Kind of wanna get her interest in me, but I don't wanna put any direct pressure on her. I'm just kind of walking around. You can see she's watching me, which is awesome. She's paying attention to what I'm doing. She's focused on me and she's not overly nervous at this point. Now, if I were to try and just walk right up to her, she probably would get pretty nervous with that um, and not be too happy about that. So just check in the gate. The camera's gonna lose us for a second there. <clears throat> So there I moved a little bit closer to her and she did feel like she needed to move away. And again, that's okay. We're giving her that choice. Especially early on establishing the relationship with her. She's watching me. She's aware of what I'm doing. She's kind of thinking about things like shit. You could kind of see on her face like she's she's curious. She's kind of debating with herself if she wants to come over and say hi, but she's not quite sure yet. I can kind of walk around her a little bit, and there she turns so that she can keep watching me. So that's awesome. So I'm getting a little bit closer to her as I'm walking around her here, but I'm still not directly approaching her. This is where it can get a little boring and you want to make sure that you've got the time <clears throat> to spend just hanging out and give it the time that it takes. If you're trying to rush this, then you're just going to be putting more pressure on the horse. Remember, you don't want to seem like a predator on the hunt. And I'm just hanging out. I'm going to see if she'll let me approach a little bit. <clears throat> I'm pretty nervous there, so I kind of changed what I was doing and changed my path a little bit. So I went past her instead of directly towards her. So working my way a little bit closer, but still not going directly towards her. There, she's letting me pretty close, so I can offer her a chance to say hi a little bit. I got pretty close to her there, and she decided that that was a little bit uncomfortable. That's okay.
again there. She decided to move away a little bit, but she's still watching me. She's still showing an interest. So there, when she walked away, I chose to walk away too. And that was basically just me saying, hey, I hear you. I see you telling me that you're not quite comfortable with this yet. So I'm going to honor that and I'm going to move myself away. I'm going to honor your choice to not want to be around me right now. And that can be really hard to do. Especially if your whole goal is to catch the horse can seem a little counterintuitive to actually let them walk away from you. But by giving them that choice, you're going to create a situation where the horse eventually wants to be with you. So here I'm offering her a little bit of a food reward. And the reason that I do this is because I want to show her that being around me can be a pleasant thing. And I want to be able to offer her something um, so that she actually wants to be around me. Because if I have nothing to offer her, why, does she, why would she even want to um, come up to me? And at this point in time, I don't have a lot of things that I can offer her. Some of the things that we might normally offer a horse that's more comfortable around people is a sense of safety, which is something that horses um, very much um, seek out. But with Evie, because she doesn't trust me yet, I can't offer her that sense of safety that I would with another horse. Um, I can't offer her friendship or companionship, again, because she doesn't trust me yet. And I can't offer her a sense of fun or um, adventure like I might with another horse um, that already trusts people. So I'm really very limited in what I can offer her and the reasons that I can give her for wanting to be around me. So using food is a way to kind of start the conversation with her and start getting her thinking, hey, maybe being around people is not so bad and I can actually get something out of it. Later on in our relationship, I of course don't want to have to use treats every time to be able to catch her. And I won't have to, and I can tell you that I don't um, already. Um, this video was taken, oh, about two weeks ago, and I can already um, now catch Evie without treats. Um, but in the very beginning, especially with a nervous horse like this that um, hasn't really, um, doesn't really have a reason to want to be around people yet, using those treats um, or food can give them a little bit of a reason to kind of want to seek you out and um, even just get a relationship started. It's really hard to start a relationship <clears throat> if the horse has no desire to be around you at all. So in this case I'm not using the treats so much for bribery as I am just to start um, putting the idea into her head that being around people is a good thing. So here I'm offering her another treat. She let me get her get pretty close to her that time. And I want to reward for reward her for allowing me to come up to her and I want to make it a pleasant experience for her. Um, and at this point in time, even touching her is something that she's not super comfortable with. So I can't even offer her reward through uh, scratching or something like that. There she does allow me to touch her a little bit. You can see right there as I started to approach her, she started to shift her weight a little bit away from me. It was pretty subtle, uh, but that's why I paused before continuing to come up to her. 
And here she's decided that she's going to allow me to touch her. She's not super comfortable with it, but she's going to go ahead and allow it. And I don't push the issue too much. I'm not going to try and grab her and throw the halter on her and uh, get a rope on her uh, before she decides to run away again. Um, I'm going to thank her for allowing me to come up to her by actually walking away from her and completely taking that pressure. And what happens then is what we're looking for. I walk away, she took a second to process it, and then she actually turned and came over to me. So I've sparked her curiosity at this point in time. She's starting to realize that um, it's not too bad being around me. So there she's again allowing me to touch her, but you can see just by her expression, the tension in her neck, in her eye, in her jaw, in her lips, that she's not totally comfortable with it yet, but she is allowing it. So that's progress at this point in time for her. So again, I'm not going to hang out there forever. I'm not going to throw the halter on her. I'm going to thank her for allowing me to touch her by walking away from her. And give her a moment to process that and that little head shaking. And then you see some licking and chewing there. And that's all her processing through that. So those are all really good signs to look for. She's keeping her attention on me. She's looking a little bit more comfortable with me being around her. Lots of blinking going on there. Ears are moving. Staying focused on me. Letting me come around her. Moving her, her head there, and then she turns and comes up to me. I'm going to walk around her and see if she'll let me approach from the other side. This horse is interesting because she's actually more guarded on her left side than on her right side. Most horses are typically more comfortable on their left sides because that's the side we usually handle them on. Um, so they, they become really accustomed to us being on their left side but can be more timid on the right side. Um, but she's actually the opposite, so a little bit interesting. I'm just taking my time here. Letting her get comfortable with me being there on her left side. And then I walk away and take the pressure off. And there she's watching me leave. I think it's awesome that she stays focused on me, stays curious. So now this is the next day. Um, actually, pause for a second here. Um, I didn't catch it on the video. I uh, st stopped the recording a little bit too soon. But um, at the end of that other session there, right here, um, after I walked away, um, she gave a couple of really big yawns, um, some licking and chewing, some snorting, all really good, good signs um, that she was thinking about what just happened. She was feeling okay with it. She was releasing um, any of the tension that had built up um, from her nervousness. 
um, and she was coming into a more confident, comfortable state of mind. So those are all really awesome uh, signs to see, and I wish I had kept the film rolling, but unfortunately I didn't, uh, so I didn't catch it. But if you see those things in your horse, really good things to look for. All right, so then moving on. This is the next day. <clears throat> So there, as I came over, she moved away a little bit, and that's okay. Just because she allowed me to come up to her yesterday doesn't mean we're going to start right off with that um, in the next session, but she's pretty curious there. She decided to come back over a little bit, a little bit closer, just keeping her attention on me. I'm just going to kind of ignore her. Of course, I'm aware of where she is and what she's doing, but I'm not putting a strong focus on her or on catching her. I'm just thinking about being around her. And there she decided on her own to come a little bit closer. So I'm just waiting for her, giving her that time to process things. A lot of times we're in such a big hurry, and I know for myself too, um, I'm guilty of it as well, um, but we're in such a big hurry that we don't um, always give the horses time to think about things and to kind of process through things. So just taking those extra moments can really make a difference. So I'm just going to start working my way a little bit closer to her there. She decides to turn a little bit to keep me on her right side. So she's more comfortable on that right side. So she kind of repositioned herself there. I offer her another treat so as, a, as a thank you for letting me come closer. She actually had to figure out how to eat treats. I don't know that she's really had a lot of treats in the past. I'm just moving around her a little bit. At this point in time, I'm not asking her to turn and follow me. She's actually making that choice on her own, which is what we're looking for. And then there she does let me come on her left side. You can see the tension again. If you look at um, her eye, you can see the white of her eye there a little bit, the tension in her neck. But we get a nice lick and chew afterwards, and she decides she's still going to come along with me. So she's not totally okay with it yet, but she's getting to the point where she's curious. And it's, she's figuring out that it's not so bad, and she can tolerate the little bit of touches. Eventually, I'd like her to get to the point where she's not just tolerating, but she's actually completely comfortable and even enjoying it. But we need to work through that process. There's a nice big shake. That's awesome. It's another good release sign that she's getting comfortable. So you can't go straight from <clears throat> being nervous and not wanting something straight to enjoying it. So we have to go through this stage of just tolerating. And that's part of the process, but I don't want her to stay here. I don't want her to always just have to tolerate everything that I do. Eventually I want her to be comfortable and to even enjoy being around me. And that's why I'm giving her the choice to leave if she wants to.
I'm just going to hang out with her a little bit. We watch horses when they're out with other horses. They spend a lot of time just hanging out with each other, just standing next to each other and doing nothing. Just relaxing and enjoying the moment together. So that's what we're doing here. This is again where it can seem a little bit boring. But this is a super important part of building a relationship with your horse. You want to spend time just hanging out with them where you don't have a specific purpose in mind. You're always doing, doing, doing things with your horse. Then you're not going to have um, that connection with them um, that's developed through just hanging out and relaxing together. So there, I walked away from her again to take the pressure off of her, and she again jo chose to come up to me. And again, I walked away from her, and she made the decision to come with me. So that's awesome. And even though she's still not totally comfortable with me touching her, she's deciding that it's okay, and it's really not so bad, and that she does still want to interact. She's curious enough that she wants to keep interacting with me. You can see a lot of blinking, a little bit softer expression on her face. She's more interactive with me there. She's actually curious as she's smelling me. Not as sure about me touching her, but she's going to stay close. Yeah, she's she's actually looking for a treat a little bit, which at this point in time I'm okay with and actually even like seeing because it means that she's interacting with me. She's starting to realize that uh, she can get things from me and there's actually positive to being around me. So of course I don't want her to turn into a horse that's going to be pushy or mouthy around treats, but... At this point in time, I like seeing her um, looking for the treat and kind of asking for a treat a little bit uh, because it just shows that she's she's interacting with me a little bit more. And this is another session. And now here I'm going to put the halter on her again this time. So this uh, was the third day now. And I'm going to actually try and put the halter on her now. But again, I'm not going to just walk up to her and throw the halter on. So right now I'm just kind of hanging out off camera a little bit giving her a chance to decide what she wants to do. I'm going to move around a little, see if I can spark her interest. And kind of draw her attention. Decides to move away, that's okay. I'm not going to chase her or follow her. I'm 
just me holding the halter is a little bit different. And I'm sure she recognizes the halter and she knows what's going to happen. I'm just walking around, walking near her, but not directly towards her with my focus being to just walk around her and eventually to get closer to her, but not, not walking at her. There she let me approach, so I'm going to reward her by backing off. Just giving her time to process. Taking the time now is going to make things a lot faster later on. Because eventually I'll have a horse that's easy to catch. And it won't take me, you know, 10 minutes to catch her each time. <clears throat> so I put the time in now to save me time later on. And there she let me come up to her. And you can see even there I'm talking to someone off screen and it's good because it takes my focus off of her. It kind of takes that pressure off of her a little bit. So then I'm just going to gently put the rope over her neck and then give her some time to process that. Taking my attention off of her again. I'm just moving super slowly. Letting her process through. So just really taking my time, rubbing on her, and you can see the difference in, um, the way she's reacting and just her mindset. She's definitely not totally comfortable yet, but she's a lot more accepting and tolerant of what I'm doing. Much less reactive than when I put the halter on her at the beginning of the video, when I was just trying to get it on. <laughs> I'm just really taking the, taking my time there. And then we get the halter on. So end result is still the same. The horse has the halter on, but it's a much more pleasant experience for the horse. And she feels like she's actually got some say in the matter and it's not just being forced on her. And that <clears throat> is going to make her a lot more willing to let me put the halter on her in the future. And then I got the halter on, so then we're just going to end the session there. So I'm not going to ask her to do anything more. 
I'm not going to try and take her out and make her do something. Um, I want her to um, have a positive experience and a positive ending and not think that, you know, hey, every time I get the halter on, I have to go work. Um, so that's another big part of um, catching your horse is that when you do catch them, you want to make sure that it's a really positive experience for them um, and they and what you do with them after you've caught them is just a, just as important. So you want to make that a positive experience for them as well. So they don't think, hey, every time I get caught, I have to go do something that I don't like. Um, because then they're not going to want to get caught either. Um, so I end the session there by just thanking her for letting me put the halter on. And then that's the end. All right, so I hope that helps you and gives you guys some things to think about. Um, these ideas can be used for other things as well. If your horse is nervous about um, saddling or bridling or um, going to a certain part of the arena or anything like that, um, you can think about taking your time and giving the horse a say and honoring and respecting um what they tell you and listening to your horse and um, their comfort levels and just gradually um, building up their confidence in you. So some things to keep in mind just to wrap up and um, remind you of what we talked about. Um, you want to approach it with the mindset that you don't have to catch the horse. Your focus is not on catching the horse. You just want to be around the horse and catching them is just going to be a happy byproduct. So um, keep your energy relaxed and your focus doesn't have to be on the horse directly. You just want to think about being around and near the horse and um, get the horse to be curious and actually seeking out being around you. And then eventually you're going to have a horse that wants to be with you and is easy to catch. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions or comments.